Business. That's very true. So when you do start a business, you come up with a business plan and that business plan also consists of a business budget, which is why today we're going to be elaborating on how much I spent on a 360 photo booth. That's going to be the first part of the video. The second part of the video is going to talk about things that I need to pay for expenses that I didn't imagine when I set up my budget. So I hope that these things that came out of nowhere, it's not that they didn't come out of nowhere, it's just I wasn't educated enough to consider to factor these things in into the budget. So that's gonna be part two. Part three of this video is going to be uh, something that you guys should do before you even launch a 360 photo booth. So let's go ahead and jump into my laptop right now. <laughs> 2000 by $2,100 for the 100 centimeter mm, we can do a lot better than that just out of curiosity what is the next size down 80 centimeters is 1800 pretty much okay guys so this is just to kind of give you an idea of how much US uh, sellers are selling these for but you and me we're on a budget. We set ourselves a budget already, and we're going to save a lot of money on this 360 photo booth, which is why when we dive into my budget here, you guys can see that on the 360 photo booth, I spend $1,600, and that's on the 100 centimeter um, size platform photo booth. So if we go here, you guys can see that the 100 centimeter holds up to three to four people, and uh, the options are wooden case or flight case i made a video previously i said you should get the flight case i changed my mind i changed my mind i did why because the flight case itself is pretty freaking heavy and if you get the wooden case uh the wooden case is cool because it comes with like a little dolly in a bag and that's really all you need the flight case adds weight to the actual booth itself so consider this right consider uh if you are going to be doing this alone because if you're going to be doing this alone the 100 centimeter that holds up to three to four people is, is is pretty heavy so if you're a smaller person and you don't have like a lot of muscle um the 100 centimeter is definitely uh, a job it's definitely like a, a mission because it's somewhat heavy i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty i'm pretty sm pretty muscular right now it's even kind of heavy for me so that's one thing you got to look out for also guys when you guys are looking for your supplier, which I'm going to make this easy for you because I have a supplier that I dealt with and to this day, we still um, have a really good relationship. Um, they're offering a two-year warranty. You can't go wrong with a two-year warranty. Get at least minimum a one-year warranty, but preferably a two-year warranty. Now, let's dive into this budget right here. I spent $1,600, okay? These are the things. This is... um. These are some of the things that you want to look out for when you are ready to buy a 360 photo booth you want to jump onto alibaba we're going to go overseas and get prices because these are the suppliers these are the manufacturers which means they cut a lot of the middlemen out and you can save a lot more money on buying a booth through alibaba now when shopping on alibaba uh, one of the things you really have to look into is the supplier types you want to make sure that there's trade assurance and you want to make sure that the verified supplier is clicked and the reason why is because one trade insurance is going to cover you if anything happens with your package from the time that you purchased it to the time that it shows up to your front door and a verified supplier means that this supplier has already provided alibaba with um their business license their brick and mortar actual storefront their their location information to show that they're a verified supplier they are the real deal and right here these little diamonds try to buy from suppliers that have three plus diamonds so two that's okay that means their feedback is decent but three and up you're going to be in good hands now as far as suppliers go um i suggest this supplier right here um that i went with i went to i bought mine right here from this supplier her name's Cindy. Cindy is super cool. She has a down-to-earth personality. She speaks really good English, which really helps with the communication. And it shows you guys right here how much I spent, right? Now, the fly case, I honestly, now that I have experience and now that I'm actually, that I have it here physically, I would have said, no, nah, you know what? I'm going to hold off on the fly case and use this $150 
for something else on my budget sheet so if you guys are interested um, i can hook you up with cindy she is my supplier and i will continue to go through her when i'm ready to buy my second photo booth uh, i think it's really really smart to buy a second photo booth 360 photo booth as soon as you have money from your from your first initial uh, investment that way if one goes down you have another one for backup and you guys don't experience any downtime so that's part one on how to seek out a good supplier to buy your 360 photo booth i'm the plug if you guys need uh my sales girl cindy she's like i said good people very honest i love her sense of uh, uh communication that's what we need we need salespeople to steer that confidence to make us feel like you know what i'm taking an informed decision i'm gonna buy this photo booth right so now we're gonna jump in back onto the uh sheet and this is part two of the video uh this, these right here, these three, I did not see them coming. I did not see me building a website, uh, my domain for three years, as you guys can see right over here on Wix. Is this three years? No, this is in the invoice. This right here. So 360photoboothrental.net, this domain, I bought it for uh, three years. It cost me $68.55. I wasn't planning on spending money on a domain or a website. Um, my mentality was grab it, put it on social media, Instagram, TikTok, and I'm good to go. You're going to soon find out that when people are ready to spend you hundred, when people are ready to uh, pay you hundreds of dollars, they want to see that you're legit. They want to see a website. And within that website, they want to see who you are where you were established they want to know the details of who they're doing business with right guys because this is this is um this isn't the cheapest service you know and then the website i spent 108 dollars i'll show you guys right over here here's a premium plan for my canary capital rentals website fortunately i had a coupon so i paid 108 dollars for my premium website now keep in mind this is the premium website it's not the website that's already built for you good to go it gives you um super easy templates to just plug in your information and you're good to go now this right here is a biggie this right here is the big one today uh and today's date is february 22nd i bought business insurance the reason why i bought business insurance today is because uh district uh booked me and when you do larger venues they're the, the, one of the first things they're going to ask you is can i get a copy of your business or your policy number your, or your business insurance and if you don't have it you come off as amateur you come off as a very small business who's just got started who didn't even factor that in you don't want to be that person you want to make sure you have business insurance now my business insurance for one for uh, it's, it's a month to month $53.13. So if you guys go, you know, I, I just, I went on YouTube, I went on Google and I was looking for a place to buy business insurance for small businesses. And I found this place. Um, I think the name is, where's the name? The name should be here somewhere. It's called, um, Thimble right here. You guys can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. Thimble. And so I paid Thimble for my first month. As you guys can see the start date, it's just one month. Um, just so that I can provide uh, the client the business insurance so that he can have my business information and feel confident. Don't mind that. That's my address. You guys don't need to, that does, that's, that's not important. Uh, but here, the coverage limits. So it's a $1 million uh, general liability. And then customer property, something happens on the, cus on the customer's property, you damage something, it covers up to $5,000. And then for your business equipment protection, up to $2,500. Keep in mind that you guys can change these numbers and depending on how much you uh, change these numbers that's going to um, dictate how much you'll be paying monthly right here equipment description i put all the stuff that i'm going to be using for my 360 photo booth which is a macbook pro the 360 photo booth itself the rgb lights all that good stuff including the ipad now one really important thing that i'm really going to point out right now and that is iphone my iPhone, iPhone mini that I use for the slow-mo camera is not covered by the insurance. So just know guys that this insurance does not cover mobile phones. It didn't say anything about Canon cameras and GoPros. So if you have that, I'm sure it'll cover that. But for some reason, it doesn't cover mobile devices, iPhones. All right, so that's one thing you should definitely factor in is getting insurance for your 360 photo booth. Another cool thing is that, say for example, someone emails you and says, Hey, you know, I was uh, interested in booking a 360 photo booth for this venue. Uh, I was wondering what your rates are and if you're available on these specific dates. So then you jump into the email and you reply, here's our rates and here we've attached our insurance 
policy. So when you reply like that, right away they know that they're dealing with professionals. And I want you guys to be in that position. I want you guys to be seen in that light as professionals. So those uh, are the, the things that I really did not think about was one, the domain, the website, especially the business insurance. I mean, in back of my mind, I knew eventually I was going to need business insurance. But when I started getting emails from customers for bigger venues, I realized like I'm just going to get it. And, and it's month to month, right? So you don't lose out on much. I don't have a link, um, like an affiliate link for any of these three guys. But like I said, Wix is where I build my website. And uh, this other company, the small insurance business company is called Thimble. Check them out. Let me know what you think. Let me know how much you're paying for your business insurance. Let me know if I'm getting a good deal. I feel like I'm getting a decent deal just to start off with. I did do a little bit of research because, you know, I'm constantly doing research. But like I said, there's always going to be things that you miss. Uh, and what's, uh, what's another thing? So that's that kind of wraps up part two. Um, if you're just taking a quick glance, these are all the things that I bought so far. Uh, this is my budget that I set, $3,000. Out of the $3,000, I've already spent $2,000 no, 2,500, come on, David, get it together, $2,555, got it, and now I got $445 left, now I want to use $445 of my budget that's left on running ads and possibly paying freelancers to help me um, have a larger digital presence, but as you guys can see from my previous video I just made, I found a way that you guys can get to the top of the page on Google without having to pay uh, for ads and too many campaigns and stuff like that. And it's absolutely free. So you guys, um, when you guys are done watching this video, jump onto the other video because it's gonna it's gonna help you really rank quickly on the Google SEO local search, which leads to the third part of the video is since you're putting this business plan together in this budget and you are excited about launching this 360 photo booth that's going to generate a great income you really have to consider how easy is it going to be for people to find you and this ties to the previous video i made on how i was able to go from the fifth page on google the very last section of uh, the fifth page on google to the first page on Google in the mid section within about two weeks. That's all it took me, two weeks. So after revising my keywords, making those changes on my social media platforms, making those changes on my website, I was able to rank quickly. And now I'm getting emails and now I'm getting calls. I'm getting a lot more inquiries for the 360 photo booth business booking. So I'm in, I'm, I'm going through that phase guys where now I'm getting calls, now I'm getting emails and pretty soon I'm going to have bookings right well pretty much i already have a booking now it's actually going out setting up dealing with the client sharing the experience with you guys what i learned what i could have done differently um, all that good stuff so that wraps it up for this video and if you got any value out of it i would appreciate it if you guys hit me with a that thumbs up button